Kelly Reed with Recover Us is joining us this morning. Kelly, how have you been? Haven't talked to you in a while. You've been well? Great. Great. Thanks Good. for asking. Recover USS, uh, you, uh, Recover Us uh, deals with recovery from drug addiction. Uh, we've seen um, every reason to believe that uh, drug intake and overdose deaths have climbed substantially. Um, you can do it from an anecdotal standpoint. It usually takes a long time for suicide numbers to be compiled, so we're, they're maybe not as um, quick as we would like in, in most cases. Um, but calls to suicide hotlines up around 300 uh, percent. What have you seen in, in your office uh, in relationship to the pandemic and addiction and the attempt to recover? Well, I think people who uh, don't normally struggle from addiction are more anxious and uncertain of many things at, at this time. So, uh, you take those factors and you put that with someone who is struggling from drug, alcohol addiction, anxiety, depression, and it just adds new levels to their concerns, their worries, and uh, the problems that they face in those areas. You know, what I find interesting is uh, I follow along on the Heron Street Crimes uh, Facebook webpage. Right. Do you by chance do that? Yes, I do. Um, and I think that has changed my perception to a certain extent. <clears throat> I can't exactly say why. I think it's the faces. I think it's the eyes. Um, and I, and I, I find that I'm increasingly frustrated when talking about this subject because we've been covering it with a great deal of intensity here, especially with meth. Uh, when I ran for county commissioner, Williamson County was one of the items that was in my agenda as a county commissioner candidate. And and I've, I've come to the point where I find increasingly frustrated. I've got friends who's... Um, Family, uh, brothers, sisters, children are dead today as a result of meth. Um, and I'm not talking about the actions they take while meth. They literally, it meth killed them. Um, you know, and, and I see it, and I get increasingly frustrated with, with, with even talking about it anymore. I mean, is there any indication that we're making headway? I mean, a lot was done here to try to... Tom Cundiff, Sheriff Williamson County, former state representative John Bradley, mm -hmm. changes in laws so you can have the ingredients to make it. I mean, are we making some kind of headway here? I wish that I could say a definite yes. Uh, I don't see that. I see a lot of increase in alcohol addiction. Uh, I see more calls now with fentanyl and car fentanyl than I have that's dramatically increased over the last, I would say, three to six months. Really? Um, <clears throat> now, I had, I had some officials tell me that um, because of the intensity of the shutdown on the borders, that the price of meth has gone up exponentially and people are stealing more and committing more crimes to be able to get it. But I really have not heard so much about fentanyl intake outside of overdoses themselves. But there's, there's a... Because that's... You think meth's dangerous, throw some fentanyl in there with it. Right, right. Um, it's, I've been shocked is a minimal word to say with the calls and the people that are saying, I'm addicted to fentanyl, fentanyl and heroin. But it's still riding equal with alcohol and prescription addiction, Percocet, uh, hydrocodone, um, Oxycontin. So, you know, I, I think the increases, I don't think it's just one area, one addiction. I think there are increases all across the board. All right. When it comes to this, you've been doing working recovery. And what's interesting about Kelly and Recover Us, because a lot of treatments, it's all about the brain and talking about it, and or there's pills, take this pill and it helps, right? Just another drug. Right. Um, you know, and, and I find it interesting that, that you're using a device as opposed to, well, in conjunction with other treatments. You're using actually a device to help people with treatments that I think by many people's standards might be unconventional and completely unknown. Well, unknown is, is a definite we use the IV uh, therapy that directly affects the brain and the brain receptors. Because what I don't think is common knowledge is every addiction affects a different brain receptor. And the brain receptors create a physical and mental need for whatever that is, be it alcohol 
opioid, uh, meth, whatever that is. So to prepare the brain and detox the brain to be able to accept all of the other treatments, uh, counseling and blockers and those type of things, that's a must to be able to move forward, laying the foundation for an individual to be able to accept those other treatments and make sense of them and keep those stable in their lives is the way that Recover Us uh, works with addiction. And the device that you're talking about is something that eliminates uh, the withdrawal because most people will say, I'm at the point now where I don't get high or I'm not getting what I want out of my addiction, be that euphoric feeling, but when I don't use, I'm so incredibly sick that I can't get past that. So they find themselves caught in a wedge of they can't move forward and what they've already done to themselves is there, so they have to continue to keep using. So the device called the bridge is applied by a doctor or a nurse, and the company says to allow for a few hours for um, the patient to be able to see relief, and we generally see it within 15 minutes. So it it takes away those withdrawals. It's interesting because how often I hear this when people who I talk to are in this situation, I can't if I don't. I can't work if I don't. I can't, right? I got to have my, I got to have my medicine. Right. It's interesting because I was speaking with Tom McNamara, who was, uh, you know, my guru when it comes to talking about these issues. And I said, uh, one day I was talking to him, I said, so what's the difference between meth and crack? And he says, imagine a bathtub. Imagine that the water are those endorphins and all those chemicals that make you happy. He says, uh, the bathtub um, with crack, it drains. With meth, it doesn't. The The drain is plugged up, and it just floods every all your endorphins and constantly, and it's flowing out all over the, the, the floor, and you don't come back from it. You, you, you take your first hit of meth, and you spend the rest of your life trying to get the first hit again. Right, and that's back to that sickness. You can't get you can't get what it is you want, but you still keep chasing the dragon, as the case may be. And this ongoing desire, right, is is really where you you intercede. Uh, I think when it comes to the recovery, what's your percentage of recovery at your treatment facility? Now uh, we have a seventy eight to eighty four percent recovery rate. How long does it take to achieve that when it comes to length of treatment? Because this is another issue. In speaking and when doing research on this in the past, they say the 30-day program, which was based on alcohol, is insufficient for meth. It needs to be 90 days. And I think that period of time is key here. I think it's important. So whenever someone enters into our facility, the actual detox can be 14 to 18 days. However, they're still a part of the program ongoing for three months, six months, up to a year. And they're doing that with counseling. They're doing that with uh, check-ins with the physician and also in getting their blockers depending on the individual. Because every addiction is different. Every person is different. Uh, it takes more time to look at it from, from that perspective and work with the clients on an individual basis, but no two addiction cases are the same. But we're surrounded by it at the same time. Right. And, and it's Without a, it's a, a doubt. We, and we are. It, and it crosses all areas of profession and income. Uh, at one time, we had um, a couple different um, people teaching online classes, professors, at the facility, which kind of leads me to um, the next point. The COVID has put a uh, spin on people's lives that no one ever expected. However, because people are working from home and working on their computer, many people have taken that time and that opportunity to work on themselves because at our facility, uh, we do appeal to people that are uh, working and have jobs and need to be able to fit in the repair to themselves at that time, and they can do that 
while in the facility because of COVID because they're working from home anyway. So it's a home environment where they're in a room uh, with their laptop or whatever it may be to continue to work while they're getting their, their treatment. You know, and see, and I was going to think you were going to say some completely opposite. I thought you were saying since people have the don't have to go home and quite the scrutiny that you can do more and stay up later and get tore up and not worry about it because you're hiding behind a screen. And, mm-hmm. I, and I think there is an element of that as well, and, and probably across the board. Uh, Kelly, uh, Reed, recover us. Now, the most difficult question, then I have to let you go. Sure. Um, most people, as a rule, don't go get help unless they're encouraged from an outside force. Or uh, some people call it hit, hit rock bottom. I don't believe that you have to hit rock bottom to have a successful recovery. I think that's a foolish idea. Some people are smart enough to go, uh, that was stupid. Now I've got myself in a position. I could lose everything and I don't. My children, my wife, my kids, my husband. I want to, I want to stop. But as a rule, it's because of an outside influence. Right. Somebody, somebody in the family says, you got to go get some help, man. I, I think it's collectively, and I do think it's really important how that's addressed within families and relationships, uh, is how to approach that person. I read a book and had some teaching from a physician that worked in addiction for 30-plus years. And one of the key things that he said that really stood out to me was in 30 years of practicing and working with addiction, I have never met an addict that was proud of their behavior. Uh, They know it. They don't have to be shamed. They know that inside. But that's a fine line to be able to talk to them and encourage them that there are treatments that are available that can help them get to a better place. And you can be happy again, because that's right. all really ultimately what it's about. I just want to be happy. I don't want to be afraid. I want to be relieved. I want out. You know, I always equate it with having your hand in a trap, and you chew your arm to get, get you off to get out of it. You don't have to chew your arm off to get out of it. That's true. That's true. You don't. And when you start to repair the brain, dopamine, Uh, serotonin levels, all of those things that make us feel good and operate on a normal basis come back to you post-addiction. And that is very possible. We see it every day.